we are gonna be making a veggie pad thai. Now I have a noodles and grain section in the book that's dedicated to really delicious, quick and easy noodles and grain recipes. You will be amazed at how fast and how delicious it turns out. So I wanna talk about the types of noodles you would use for pad thai. This package right here makes it super easy. <laughs> it says pad thai noodles. They're rice noodles. And what I typically try to do, I like using this brand a lot. It is by Lotus Foods. And let's say you're at an Asian market and they don't carry this brand. Well, what type of noodles do you look for then? There's plenty of different brands of rice noodles. This one is really good. It tends to break apart though. So my favorite one is actually this brand with the three ladies. Um, the rice sticks and I typically look for a large size one that would be comparable to let's say a linguine They didn't have the three ladies brand in size large So I got an extra large just to show you but honestly for pad thai You can use anything from medium large or extra large if you like the noodles kind of thicker which I do too So to prepare noodles for your pad thai You don't want to cook the noodles because then it gets mushy later when you stir fry it up What I like to do is just add the noodles into a bowl and then submerge the whole thing in hot water I already boiled off the water. So I'm just gonna pour it into the bowl It'll take a minute to get the noodles nice and pliable and once it does soften up Just submerge the whole thing so that each strand is completely underwater and then let it sit for about 10 minutes to fully soften. So while it's soaking, let's work on our pad thai sauce. So pad thai sauce is a mixture of a few ingredients that you might already have in your pantry. Um, it's a sweet, salty, tangy sauce that's just perfect when it's mixed with the noodles and the vegetables. One ingredient that I actually use quite a few times in the book is tamarind. Tamarind is a fruit that comes in a pod like this and it is very sour and sweet at the same time. It's sticky like this. Mm. And it's used in a lot of Southeast Asian cooking. Now, when I wrote the recipes, I was using a block like this that I got from the Asian market. I highlight thoroughly in the book how to use this. Basically, you just break off a chunk and then soak it in hot water and then you kind of put it through a strainer because there's seeds in here and you get tamarind paste or puree. Right after I finished writing the book, I discovered that they actually make tamarind puree already in a jar like this. So if you go to any specialty stores or even Asian markets now, you can find tamarind puree or sometimes called tamarind paste that's already done for you so you can just buy that but making this is really really easy too and i show you how to do all that in the book getting back to the sauce all we need are equal amounts of brown sugar fish sauce oyster sauce and tamarind puree in which i use two tablespoons of each i'll add them all to a bowl and just mix them up mm. Perfectly balanced and I really taste the tamarind in there and I love it. All right, so our sauce is done. It's just about time to drain our rice noodles. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll also give the noodles a quick rinse to get rid of any starch that's still clinging on to the noodles. Our noodles are all set over here. So I'm just gonna let it hang out. The rest of the ingredients we'll need are two shallots, minced, three cloves of garlic, also minced. If you don't have shallots, you can always substitute for red onions, finely chopped. And then for the veggies, you can really use whatever veggies you'd like, but I like a lot of color and a different a variety of textures. So I opted for one head of baby bok choy. I broke them off into small leaves like this. And then one cup of shiitake mushrooms, one carrot shredded, and then one of my favorite things to add to a pad thai or any noodle dishes really are some baby corns. You can buy baby corns in a can like this and they're used in a lot of Asian cooking. They're great for stir fries and just, it adds a nice crunch. I love eating them plain as a snack too. And finally, two eggs. If you wanted to go completely vegetarian for this, you can always substitute the eggs for some tofu. So in a wok on high heat, I'm gonna add a drizzle of oil. You can use any high smoking point oil like avocado oil or even coconut oil. Let it get nice and hot and then we're gonna add in our minced shallots and our garlic. Stir it around, let it get fragrant for about a minute and then I'm gonna add in 
our vegetables, saving the bok choy for later. So I'll add the mushrooms, carrots, and baby corn. Let it stir fry for about two to three minutes until it's nice and cooked. Then I'll make a little bit of a well and add two eggs. I'll just scramble it up with my spoon, give it a good mix, and then I'll toss in our bok choy, our noodles, and half of our pad thai sauce. I'll mix it thoroughly, making sure the sauce is nicely coated, and at this point, it's really up to you. You can decide if you want more sauce or less. I tend to like a lot of sauce, so I'm gonna add the rest of the sauce into the mix. So once you add the noodles, the bok choy, and the sauce, you'll notice that the heat kind of cools down a little bit. What I like to do is let the heat go back up to temp, and then you'll notice that the sauce starts to boil, and that's when the noodles will finish cooking and absorb the sauce, and they will all become one. So two very important components that I like to have in my pad thai are, of course, bean sprouts and peanuts. So I have a little bit of bean sprouts here. You can generally mix it in with the pad thai once it's off heat, but I like adding it fresh so that it maintains the crunch. Sometimes the steam ends up cooking it so it gets a little soft. Add it right on top and then sprinkle some peanuts. And then of course, to make it nice and pretty, I'll garnish it with some green onions and cilantro. Add a wedge of lime to the side, and that's our veggie pad thai. I always love squeezing a generous amount of lime on top just to bring out that tangy, sour flavor, because I love sour things. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Give everything a good mix. Mix, mix, mix. That sauce mm -hmm. is so good. <laughs> mm. And the noodles are not mushy at all because we soaked it and then we rinsed all the starch out. It really absorbed the sauce and it cooked with everything. It's just really good. I mean, pad thai sounds intimidating because you typically only order it at a restaurant, but making it at home is super quick and easy. I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe and I know that there's a ton more of delicious noodle recipes that are also quick and easy in the book and I can't wait for you guys to see it. 